here at UVU and many of you perhaps uh, are aware of me. I've been involved in some companies and uh, I don't need to hear all that and it doesn't make any difference to you because of what we're going to talk about. I was very fascinated by Angie's uh, uh, presentation about technology because for the last 20 years I've spent a lot of time uh, with technology and, and actually uh, building one of the world's largest web hosting companies that was started right here. How many of you have heard of virtual private servers? You hear that all the time now. We invented virtual private servers here in Orem and took it to the world. And so we built a, a, a pretty nice company out of, out of that technology. And we've seen the technology have a significant impact in the way all of us both access and use web content right now. Now, what do I do here? <clears throat> what I do here is to work with students and faculty and a few outsiders that have new technologies and they're wondering how do I create value out of this technology? What do I do to create either a business or to create a product that can be licensed to somebody else and let you live off the royalties? For example, how many of you heard about the recent settlement with BYU and a company called Pfizer? $400 million. The inventor of that technology got a hundred of that. A hundred million. He's a professor over at BYU. So he didn't go out and start a company. He wasn't an entrepreneur, but he was a technologist and a darn good one. And he's still, and he's got version two and version three uh, on the book, uh, you know, he's working on those right now. And that'll create additional value. So there are a number of ways to create value from technology. I was quite surprised by uh, some of the examples. Uh, Angie showed a C-7, fancy new aircraft. During the Vietnam War, I flew a C-47. It's called a Goonie Bird. It was one of, the, one of the airplanes used during the Second World War. That shows how old I am, okay? And we could go on and on about uh, the technology changes that I've seen in my lifetime. But let's talk about why we have a function like I perform here at UVU. There has been, over the last 30 years, since the law was changed, a huge amount of technologies that have come out of universities and have touched all of our lives. The University of Utah, right here locally, is one of the leading universities in the United States that takes technology produced at the university and moves it into the marketplace through either starting up companies or licensing to existing companies. You've probably heard of some of these companies. Evans & Sutherland, ARUP, it could go on and on. The University of Utah takes in about $20 million a year from the royalties from previous technologies that have been spun off. And so they, they do a tremendous job. Two years ago, the University of Utah led the nation in that activity. MIT was in second place and Brigham Young University was in third place. So we have a legacy right here in Utah of this kind of activity. What we're trying to do at UVU is to take our place among that top 10. Now, we're nowhere near there. Please understand that. But we've been at this for just a couple of years. But we've got that opportunity. And so that's the reason why there is the kind of activity that I perform here. Here's an interesting quote from Forbes a couple of years ago. Technology, not just IT and the internet, but energy tech, biotech, civil engineering, science-based project gen uh, progress generally, just like we just saw, can revitalize growth and help create a more just, interesting, and prosperous world. That's what we're looking for. We talk about cancer treatment, We've got a professor right here at UVU 
who has developed a way to diagnose breast, uh, breast uh, cancer cells and help doctors treat breast cancer. And we're, we're testing that right now, and the results are phenomenal. So we expect to be able to commercialize that. Uh, we have a professor right here at UVU who has developed a way to identify people on the basis of protein rather than DNA. DNA is not always present in crime scenes or other locations where there's a need to identify people. And yet protein is always present. And so the, the, uh, this professor is right now down in California. We got a fairly large grant for him to go down and spend the summer and this fall semester researching to, uh, to create this technology a little better. He's a biology professor right here. So we've got a lot of this kind of technology that will change the way things are done. Uh, just a brief note, what we're after is to take technology and create value eventually. In business terms, you will always hear about competitive advantage. That's something that you will talk about in your strategy classes all the time. How do I create competitive advantage and sustainable competitive advantage? The way we do that is by using new technologies, the nanotechnologies that allow glass to bend. Just this morning, I read a report where they have created the thinnest piece of glass. It is two atoms thick two atoms thick, and I read that just this morning. Uh, so the, the, the new technologies will eventually allow value to be created. Here's an interesting quote from a great uh, capitalist. Science is the first productive force. Deng Xiaoping. I don't know, that was probably before any of your time, but Deng Xiaoping took over China after Mao's death in the 70s and in the 80s. He's the one that unleashed Chinese economic growth that has resulted in where they are today. Now let's take a look at this quickly. This is a description of what Angie was talking about before. We start with some scientific discovery somehow, some way. A new nanotechnology, a new carbon fiber, a new isolation of some new product or new uh, invention uh, or, or new discovery here, scientific discovery. Then smart people figure out, well, we can invent some, we can use that somehow. And so they invent something. Right here is what we call patents. We get a patent on that particular invention. Then invention leads to innovation. Just because we've invented something doesn't mean that it's immediately a product. We have to now use that invention and incorporate that into a product that is useful. Angie described that process effectively a little while ago. This is where we have product development. We go from patents to product development. And economic development then occurs when that innovation gets used in a real product and taken to the marketplace. Some places think that innovation is just coming up with patents. That's the reason why IBM has hundreds of thousands of patents sitting there on the shelf. They haven't been used. Nobody has used them. The value of unused patents is estimated to be $4 trillion worldwide. These are patents that are just sitting on the shelf. Nobody uses them because they have thought to move them forward into product development and then economic development. Where's the opportunity for you and I? If we can find some of those useful patents, the inventions, and then think about, creatively think about, how to innovate those inventions into product, and then move that product into the marketplace. Now that's real entrepreneurship. That's what creates value. That's how technology winds up creating value. 
for all of us. Especially for you. By the way, the, the professor at BYU sitting on 100 mil, that's uh, a little bit of value. Okay? We built a little internet company right here, sold it for $5 billion. Still the largest international internet acquisition ever. And it started right here in this valley. All right, let's talk about innovation for just a second. There's various kinds of innovation. We're not gonna go through a, a significant detail here, but simply to point out that where you really have an opportunity is if you make small changes, incremental changes to an existing product, or perhaps a little larger changes called a radical innovation. To do a revolutionary, come up with something brand new that the world has never seen, takes a lot of time and money. To imitate something you've already seen, there's no profit in that because the market already has it. So this is where we find real value. What do we do here at UVU? First thing is we help find interesting new ideas and technologies. We review those technologies for their real commercial potential. Then, for those that survive this review process, we nurture them. We help with the, uh, with the idea. We, we help move it forward. We help find you some funding. We've funded about $500,000 worth of investment in, in uh, faculty activity right here with their new technologies just in the last couple of years. We nurture them. We help them figure out how to develop a business model. In your business classes, you're talking about business model canvas and nail it, then scale it with a big idea hypothesis and all that kind of stuff. Those are things that have been developed. The big idea hypothesis, my own uh, technology assessment tool, those are things that have been developed right here at UVU. Finally, we help with the marketing. Let's put the business together and do the marketing. And there's a way to do all of that. Here's how we do it all. Finding and reviewing and nurturing and marketing. That's what we do. That's what my office is designed to do. So, we take the technologies that get developed. We put them together with people who can move them forward, both in terms of technological development as well as business development. And we provide the kind of support that will enable you to take advantage of the market opportunities that get developed from a constantly changing technological framework. So that's what I do here at UVU, and that's where I have a lot of fun. I could give you some additional examples uh, about some of the technologies. We've got, we talk about uh, sustainability. Did you know that UVU has filed a patent on a, on a uh, thorium molten salt reactor? Any of you heard of a molten salt reactor before? Molten salt reactors were invented in the 1940s. They create a tremendous amount of, uh, of power and heat, so they can produce up to one gigawatt of, uh, of electrical power. They were disbanded after running for, ye for several years at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. They were disbanded because they did not produce noxious junk that could be enriched to become bombs. We didn't want them. If they didn't produce stuff that enabled us to blow people apart, we didn't want that technology. So it got forgotten. It has been renewed. If you want an interesting afternoon, do a search on thorium molten salt reactors and look at all of the recent videos that have been posted on uh, the power of molten salt reactors. UVU owns the patent on one device of those. And we're move, trying to move that forward. We recently got a state grant to help us move that forward. Anyway, we could go on and on. I'll stop there and I think there's the time for some questions for the two of us. Thanks for allowing me to be here.